Hi, I'm David Stewart with Intel Corporation, part of the Open Source Technology Center, and we're trying to make Xeon the best platform to run Solaris and Open Solaris on. And you know, if you think about a server uh, operating system, server application, well, what are some of the things that you want to look for? Um, again, Xeon is a very popular uh, server uh, platform for the uh, for the enterprise for high performance computing. Open Solaris is a great operating system. So the marriage of them, we want to try and make uh, really terrific. And so, um, so one. I want to try and d dig into a little bit is what are some of the things that I might look for in a server processor and more than just what the chip heads kind of talk about in terms of the you know the feeds and speeds and that sort of thing I want to drill in on some of the key features that open Solaris and Solaris really work well on so uh, and how I want to do that is I want to really talk to our uh, next generation uh, architecture that will be available in 2008. The Dunnington is the code name for it. I'm sure it will have some other, uh, you know, sort of official name when it's actually launched, but this is what we refer to it as. And um, one of the things that I think is really important is, well, cache memory. Now, cache here, we're not talking about money. What we're really talking about is you know, the, that memory that sits between the processor and main memory. And so it really speeds things up if you can get the working set size of, of whatever you're running to fit within cache. Um, so this is, uh, uh, think about enterprise applications like transaction processing, databases, business intelligence, uh, enterprise apps, um, and even some high performance computing apps can really scream with great cache size. And uh, this next generation Dunnington processor actually comes across with 16 meg of uh, shared last level cache per socket. So that means on the same silicon that I've got the processor, I've got this uh, you know, 16 meg of shared uh, inclusive uh, last level cache. That, what the, all these applications I was talking about really scream with that. And Open Solaris really takes advantage of this well too, and Solaris also, because um, in fact uh, it will be aware of the cache size and uh, because you know, we work uh, with the community to make sure that it recognizes this processor and can then keep threads that are uh, really have good cache warmth already, really schedule them with that cache that's warm for it. So um, that's a really great advance. Now, what else should you look for? I think it's good to also look for a number of processors because if you think about great enterprise applications, great high performance computing applications, they're already you know, multi-threaded. So they take advantage of more processors. The more processors you can throw at them, uh, well-threaded applications were, are just gonna run faster. And Dunnington here, again, um, um, this is uh, pretty cool because this actually has six processors per piece of silicon. So six processors, processing cores is what we call them. Uh, and so that means uh, for every uh, socket, every piece of silicon that we uh, could plug into our four-way uh, servers, um, we'll have six processors. So that means a fully configured four-way server will actually have you know, 24 processors. My, I remember the old days where it used to be a 24 processor, multi-processor system was incredibly expensive and complex, et cetera. And this is you know, a high volume server. And again, Open Solaris will work really well with this as, as well as the Solaris operating system because, you know, in fact, that um, it knows the number of processors that you have and can, again, uh, schedule uh, processes uh, uh, correctly for this kind of architecture. So that's, that's very cool. Um, the other thing that's, that's good here is uh, there's some new virtualization features that will really speed up uh, virtualization. So this is something to look at for this platform as well. It's a nice target for virtualizing, you know, collect, consolidating a bunch of servers together. Um, also, um, this uses our latest, you know, 45 nanometer processing technology. Now, I, you know, I, I, I know you're kind of wondering, well, why does that make a difference from a software standpoint? The way to think about this is that's 45 nanometer distance between uh, wires on the silicon itself. Now, why that's important is 45 nanometers means that you get uh, lower power consumption. And 45 nanometer, what's the wavelength of light for crying out loud? I mean, you know, this is fantastic, but this really actually helps lower the power utilization of the data center. Um, it's so these are some features to, to think about as you're you know, selecting a server for some of your projects. What works best for Solaris and Open Solaris? Why? Let's think about cache, let's think about number of processors, even that 45 nanometer uh, process technology is, is really terrific. So uh, how you can get involved, you know, come to opensolaris.org. Um, we have an Intel platform project we'd love you to get involved with there and help us to make the operating system even better for these new uh, processors. And you can kind of see some of the changes we put in to adapt to this new architecture and help make it better. So I hope that you'll uh, check out these new processors and uh, look for ways that you can take advantage of them.